she's giving her point of view on it and you and that's what made it personable and relatable so but the question is you know do we consider some of these people who just pull out a microphone um journalists no i don't the people can get on air and this is how misinformation spreads. If there is anything that is misinformation that we spread on our show, and if you've seen the uh, transition of our show, we had it where it was very um, news uh, um, uh, worthy. A lot of the things were just news based and that was on me. I wanted it to be that way. And then I was like, okay, Ben, we now, you know, we're in a more free space again. So let's give it, let's give it both best of both worlds. So we merged both where we had the commentary, the fun, the DJ um, and the news. We would start off with the hard, what we call hard news. And we would go into softer news uh, where we like entertainment, um, what's current and things like that. But a lot of people will grab the mic these days and not that they need a degree because I've seen some people because um, now you can really watch courses online and see what, what you need to do to become a journalist. Like there are these um, quick flyby courses or whatever, you know, that you can do. It's almost like a trade now. You have to know how to um, attribute where you're getting your news from. You have to know these things and, and, and to make sure that you're giving actual factual things during the conversation because it'll just be opinions. So sometimes you could just be somebody who is um, like a, on a podcast. Now we may be podcast style, but it's still a new show, but you may be somebody who is just somebody who gets a mic and just has a show uh, and you like to talk about the news, but it doesn't make you a journalist because all you do is just getting on here and saying what you like, what you don't like this and that, but you never gave, any actual facts. Um, and that's to keep your audience. Some people do it where to keep their audience and it, it grows because some people don't like to hear things. They like conspiracy, right? They don't like to hear the truth. Uh, they don't, or they like to only hear what is solely what they like. So there's a group of people like that. And I know on our channel, we're going to talk about a lot of things black. Yeah, it's going to be black. It's going to be blackity black, 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 black. And I know with some people that it can offend them. But with the news that we're given, we're always going to start off with the facts, the who, what, when, where, the basics. Uh, and then we're going to attribute where we got that from. And then we're going to move forward with how we feel as black people in the situation. Why? Or, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, go ahead. Why? Why does that offend people? Funny enough, on Fox, when we, when you watch Fox News and you have um, people on there who are hosting these shows um, and they can have their, which has been for years, before digital, before all of that, they'll consider them journalists. And for some reason, when Black people are doing the same exact thing, we can't be journalists because it's just solely Black. So we are um, separating ourselves. We're... Um, uh, we're marginalizing ourselves. We are, um, we're making people uncomfortable because we're calling them out. Uh, you know, whether it's Republicans or the right, I call out, look, I sound like Trump. I call out both sides. I do. I'll say what's happening. Look, listen, Democrats or liberals or neoliberals or whatever they want to call themselves tomorrow or tonight. And the same thing with conservatives or, you know, Republicans, the right. I call everybody out because, you know, it's going to be an issue that I need everybody to get up, like to, to, to talk about. And, but people who... They'll be in the comment section saying, well, it's not really a black issue or why do you have to make it a black thing? You know why? Black issues are so undercovered, <laughs> like people won't cover them. And when they do, if it's like like the young man who recently uh, was shot uh, uh, by going to the wrong house, um, 16 years old, 16 years old, just and rang a doorbell rang a doorbell thinking that he was picking up um, his, 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 his family, his siblings, and being shot twice. What kind of a intruder rings the doorbell? If the right? news gives it, they're going to give it, and they'll cover it in a way where it's made to, for the 16-year-old to be an adult, yep. not a child, and they'll find a photo and it will be him looking like he's not a child. He's a perpetrator, a thug. Um, and in our space, we can actually 
cover that child the way he needs to be covered, have the conversation, uh, give the facts. Ben has been somebody who has gone out on the field to talk to families and get their voices about a lot of these, um, you know, uh, these shootings that happen to black boys, or black children, uh, black men. I have been somebody who was able to cover in a, a I'll never forget uh, uh, the mayor, Rufus, um, of uh, what was the town? It was a small town in Georgia. And I can't remember the town, but I remember this was a story that was going, it was under the radar. And I said, hey, yo, no, we got to cover this. This mayor can't get the keys in this small city. And he's the mayor of this city. And he can't get the key. He has to go like through the back door. They treat him like just a regular person. They don't give him any respect. I covered that story. It went viral. And the mayor reached out to me and said, because of you, I'm able, people were able to see me and I'm able to, I had got the keys to the city there. They're treating me. It was a big thing. So in our little space, right? When we're covering these news stories and everybody's saying, it's no, why does it have to be black? white? Because we're doing this because we know how we are perceived in the media. We know that it, that they will try their best to um, uh, make the police or the, the the shooter or protect the shooter. We knew the name of the young man, of course. Uh, we knew his siblings. We knew everything about him, but we didn't know anything about the shooter. He was being protected by the media, and that's naturally how it is. That's not, he's an 80 year old man. They wanted us to feel bad uh, and sensitive because he's an 80 year old man. And no, a little boy was shot twice for ringing a doorbell looking for his, his siblings. That's a modern day lynching. Okay. So, okay. So, you know, I'm not naive to it. I just want to make it as clear as possible for anyone listening who might yeah. not be totally tuned into what goes on here. White people talk about it and it's just normal. We're just talking about stuff. Yeah. Black folks talk about it and it's like, Oh, who do you think you are? Yeah. Right. You're full of yourself. <laughs> You're making a bigger deal out of it than it is. Right. Exactly. So yeah. that bias, I hate it. It doesn't seem to be going anywhere. It drives me, it drives me up the, I mean, and that's an understatement. It, it's it's not okay. It it and it's yeah. not. And a lot of people get offended, but I still and I used to try to walk the line where I didn't want to be offensive. But when I'm covering a story about the president of the United States calling my people um, and where I'm where my family is from, um, it, it, it's a shithole country. And I'm sitting here. I'm just covering it. Uh, Donald Trump calls Haiti a shithole country. More at five like. No, we're going to have a conversation about this. I am Haitian, right? I am first generation uh, here, but I my whole family is Haitian. Most of my family is in Haiti. I know the country is in shithole. My brother and my nephews were living there at the time. It's not a shithole country. Yes, there's a lot of um, uh, um, turmoil, and, 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 and at the time it wasn't as much war, but there were a lot of things going on there. Uh, uh, Haiti is a very beautiful country. And I think that we should have that conversation on exactly what is happening there before we just call it a shithole country. There are things that are happening there that are uh, uh, with the government. And I was able to flesh that out and talk about how, you know, it's up to me to sit here and and, ha and, and let y'all know about the people, about my people, and not sit here and just act like nothing happened. If white people can talk about um, major instances that happen and have a feeling about it, then we should be able to as well. When when Trayvon Martin was um, gunned down and, um, you know, it was the Skittles, people talked about him wearing a hoodie and they why, and even him being in the wrong part of town. A whole journalist, I believe he's married to, uh, to Meryl Maori, um, one of the um, sister sisters, one of them. And uh, he actually, he was a journalist. And he said, well, he was in the wrong part of town, white man. He's in the wrong part of town. And, you know, what, what was he doing with that hoodie? And th this was before they were getting all the facts. He was able to share his feelings in that way. And to a lot of people, and everybody was running with the narrative that he was putting out there. And as the information began to come in, like, I was like, okay, now what does he have to say? It's not fair that we don't get to say anything, but these white journalists, these white commentators get to be the, the people at the front of our, our, our stories. Um, and then no offense to these other 
we know how the al algorithms work in this space. I was working for a white company when I started. So our numbers were super duper high. And when, you know, we went independent and went on our own, we still had great numbers, but it is hard to break in and, and make something money in this space because we're black. There are people who look just like us. Uh, I mean, who don't look like, just like us, but excuse me, who do a platform just like us, but they're white in this space. And they take all of our talking points. And because they're white, people see them as sensible. They take all of our talking points and they go with it and they are outraged. And all of this, they were. And they have, you know, these conversations that are exactly our conversations. You got to be black to know how to have these conversations. They listen to them and they put them on their platform. And they started using our pain and monetizing off of that going viral off of that. And um, now they're more, con that same platform is very much more conservative. Um, and when I say us, it wasn't only Ben and I, it was other black uh, platforms who were in the space as well at the time. And they have formed an allyship with, and I'm, I used to look at that show and I'm like, dang, how come they get to talk about our issues and we're talking about it as well. But people are more sensible to the white folks talking about it. And now that same, those same people have switched up and are very conservative, are uh, uh, very uh, transphobic, are very homophobic and are able to just, uh, and are very um, pro-police and, and, and want to make it seem like we want all police people like gone or whatever. And see, you can, you can no longer have that conversation. At, you know, as somebody who's an ally, because now you're you've you're benefiting from police officers because you get to walk down the street and be fine. You get to live in these really good um, uh, uh, neighborhoods. I remember I'm um, going on rising and I love um, the people on the rising and but um, they and that's on the hill and which is a great big platform. But sitting there and hearing you know, or seeing their their tweets online about having homeless people, uh, homelessness is a problem in their neighborhood and they shouldn't have like, they need to fix that problem because, you know, I don't need, I don't need running into any homeless people. Me seeing that. And I'm like, no, these are the people that get to have the conversations about homelessness on their platform. And this is what they feel like in their day to day. No, no. It's, it's like when super rich people go, money is in everything. It's like, yeah. not to you mm -hmm. because you don't have that problem. But 